Welcome to Crafty Beach. This is Julie. Today I have seven all new shore living DIYs for you using items from the Dollar Tree. I absolutely love the shore living line and I want to give you guys lots of DIY ideas for new items like these. These are new this year. They are the metal fish instead of the wood ones. And they also have the starburst, which I think looks a little bit like mushroom coral. So I wanted to find a way to DIY with these. So I'm choosing a blue and a silver fish and like the uh, like turquoise color of the starburst. For the frame of the DIY, I'm gonna use the five gallon paint stirrer sticks. These come from Walmart. They're like a couple dollars for a package of three and they're great wood and a nice large size cause I wanna make a giant frame and I wanna make like wire art with these. Um, using some wire from the Dollar Tree. So I'm going to need a stir stick for them both sides and the top and the bottom. I do want it to be kind of like a rectangle and I want it to kind of look like under the sea, like coral, fish swimming through. So I'm just kind of measuring. Um, I want to cut the handle off the top piece and to cut the end off because it was a little damaged there until I get it about the size I want it. I do want it to be super long though. Here, let me turn it so you can see it a little bit better. Um, I want to make it as long as I can. So they do have those little handles on them like that. And so I can kind of overlap that area where the handles start without a problem because you won't be able to see those. So I will cut those to that length and then I'll cut the bottom one shorter too. So I'm just cutting off part of the handle on these, trying to extend the length as much as I can. And then I'm gonna just go cut the last size and it's just a matter of putting this together. It's a great wood really for crafting. Um, I think it looks great for coastal, just the raw wood like this. So I'm gonna leave it like that. I just use some hot glue here in the corner to get us started. And I'm gonna find like my square from the Dollar Tree just to kind of help me try to get this square because sometimes it is a little hard to see um, if you're getting it square before your hot glue dries. So I put some hot glue on this side. I'm overlapping the top and the bottom pieces. Um, and the side pieces will be down below. And using my square for reference, that does really kind of help. Okay, so the bottom piece here, I do need to kind of cover that handle part, which is no problem. Um, I just need to make sure I get it square again. So I'm just gonna do one corner at a time. I use Gorilla Glue hot glue, it works really well. Um, you could use wood glue if you wanted, but I wanted to get lots of DIYs done for you guys, so we're gonna use hot glue on this. Now, I didn't necessarily want to hot glue the metal because I know that doesn't work well, so I thought a really good idea would be to use wire. They all have hangers on the back of them, and I thought, you know, I could just kind of wire them to make them look like the corals in the back. We got fish swimming through, make it look like an underwater scene. I thought that would be really cute. For the wire, I was trying to think of wire that would be durable enough from the Dollar Tree, and I chose some of this, the jute uh, covered. It's like, you know, um, a combination between the jute twine, but it's wrapped around a wire, and it's actually pretty strong. So I thought I could just run some of those along the back, kind of make them look like, kind of like seaweed kind of, and actually have them be functional to do like a wire art. I know like you can get a lot of wire under the sea art, and um, it involves like soldering and all that kind of stuff, but I don't really have those tools, so we're gonna work with what we have. I just used my staple gun, um, trying to make sure <laughs> that I didn't go all the way through the wood. The paint stir sticks are not super thick, um, so I was trying to be a little bit careful for that. I'm gonna cut this piece off a little bit longer than I need, and I just used the existing hanger there on the back of that blue fish. And what I'm gonna do is actually just kind of wrap the twine around it and loop it. That's gonna like hang it, kind of suspend this in space inside the frame. So I'm trying to get that as tight as I can because I need the length of that to go all the way to the bottom, stretching it out. 
It was a little tricky getting this one, but once you get it, it's kind of in there and it worked pretty well to um, spin it this way. You don't have to be straight up and down with your wire. You can kind of, I'm kind of going out or more towards the center and I'm going to staple that down. Now I didn't know if the staples would hide, um, like would hold the jute covered wire in place or not. You might want to double it up a little bit. For this one, I'm gonna go ahead and double it up here at the top just to make it a little thicker. That's gonna help me not get my staples all the way through that um, paint stir stick too. I'm gonna cut off another length of this. You have to be kind of careful working with this because it does like to come off the wire. So I'm trying not to work with it too much, like the very end of it. And here I'm gonna do the same thing. I go through the hanger on the back of that little starburst shape. They have the fish in all different colors. They have these little um, corals in all different colors too. And then I'm just gonna go down and do the same thing with the silver fish. I want that one kind of hanging below that one. And just using the same wire, I just loop it through just like I did on the other one, trying to get it as tight as I can and that will hold it in place. And hopefully once I get everything in here, um, I'll be able to kind of arrange the fish and everything and make sure that they're hanging right. I'm gonna cut the length on this one um, a little bit longer so that I can kind of curl the wire around, just kind of make sure that that stays in place. And I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing here on the other one that I already did, just to make sure those are nice and strong because those are gonna be hanging those little items up all by themselves. One more staple to make sure that's secure. And then um, I don't want that to look out of place, so I'm actually gonna add some more of the jute wire um, just to kind of look like decor, kind of seaweed, kind of stretching across the frame and stuff too um, to give it a little bit more character. So again, I'm just kind of folding it up. I found it worked a little bit better like that and easier to get with your staple gun. And I'm gonna start over on the corner and kind of go over here where the starburst is. I'm gonna double that up. And this is just gonna be a decorative piece of the wire, but I'm glad that I did that because it made like the other pieces not stand out as much. And then for my last one, I'm gonna kind of start here where this one ends and kind of like make it go kind of diagonally across too, all the way kind of over to the corner. Again, if I can curl it before I staple it, I found that that worked the best. That looks pretty good. I think that's enough wire to get us started. Um, I want to decorate it some more and make it look like an underwater scene. But as you can see, it's already looking pretty cute. My vision is coming into reality here. And I was trying to decide how I wanted to decorate. Um, I did have a staple go all the way through the bottom there. So I do want to kind of do something on the bottom to kind of cover that up. But I kind of had a plan for that anyway. These are new this year. Um, they're called Willows. Well, I don't know if they've had these before. I know they've had the glitter corals before, but these are not glittery. They have these in all different colors, but I really love this light blue color. And so I'm just cutting one sprig of that, cutting it into individual pieces, and to make it look like coral here on the bottom. We can have these like coming out from the bottom of the frame. So I just flip it back over and we can start scattering these around. I was trying to decide what was the best way to attach these hot glue or um, staples. And it ended up in the end that it was better to do both. <laughs> the hot glue like kind of keeps it in place, but so does the staple. I think they kind of work together because these are just gonna be kind of standing alone. I want it to be nice and strong. And I'm just scattering these around anywhere where I think needs one. I'm gonna do one right here by this fish. This is when I switched to the stapler. I thought that that worked, but when I started messing around with it a little bit, um, I found the ones that had the hot glue and the staples um, were more secure. So I went ahead and did that with all of them. I wasn't sure about this fifth piece. I'm gonna try it here in the middle. I just cut it a little bit shorter. I didn't know if it'd be too much, but I had it, so I thought we could try it. So I staple all of those in place. And I think that looks really cool. 
I thought about mixing up some more colors in there with that coral, but I thought that was really pretty that that kind of matches that coral um, there on the top. I call it a coral because I think it looks like a coral. And that's kind of what we're going for on this little ocean scene. Now, I told you I wanted to cover up the bottom because I did have a staple come through couple of staples just on that side and I have some driftwood from the beach so I thought that would be fun to attach there um, at the bottom and it would look good too with all the coral coming out of it so I'm just gonna take it and this one's pretty perfect length I'm gonna hot glue that down it's kind of weird and weathered and jagged and I kind of like it like that so I just hot glued it down like the two points that it needed to be and um it's not really going to um, need to support anything, so I didn't like screw it in or anything like that. I just attached it with hot glue. Now for the hanger, I'm just going to use a hanger I had left over from another Dollar Tree item and just kind of try to center this on the back. You might need to play around with this a little bit to get it to hang right depending on the weight of the metal pieces in your frame. I'm just going to use kind of a combination of hot glue and staples on this because um, I didn't really want the screws to go all the way through the, um, um, paint stir stick. And so I did some hot glue for a little depth and then I did staples and it seemed to work. And it's just going to make it, um, a little bit easier to hang. Otherwise you could just use the frame to hang it. Now, just seeing how everything is going to kind of play together, what I like, what I don't like. I didn't like the fact that my driftwood was not big enough to like cover the complete frame here. So I thought I would put a second piece of driftwood in here just to kind of fill out that bottom part. It'd be cute if you had enough of that to go all the way around the whole frame. I don't think I really do. So I have this piece that's a little long. I'm just going to break it off a little bit with some pliers just to kind of make it a little bit shorter. And you want it to be all kind of crazy and jagged anyway. And I chose like kind of a different color of driftwood just to give it a little bit more variety. So just trimming both ends, just trimming it by trimming it with a pair of pliers. That way it kind of breaks off and looks jagged. And I'm going to hot glue that one right next to the other one. And that provided a little bit more character down there for our driftwood. And I really love how this is coming together. I think it's really fun. I was trying to decide if I had like too much coral going on, um, not enough, and I decided I didn't really want that piece in the middle. I thought it was a little crowded there, so I'm just going to go ahead and remove that one and leave everything else in place. But as you can see, the ones that I stapled um, were kind of moving around. So that's why I was saying hot glue and staple is the best way to attach those if you're going to recreate this DIY. I had so much fun putting this one together today. I think it turned out really pretty. So I let that set up to make it super strong. And the only thing left that I wanted to do was to try to distress these a little bit. They do have like a texture, a little bit of a texture, but I don't want too much of a distress. So I'm just using like uh, antique parchment, like ivory color, one of those chunky brushes from the Dollar Tree. And I'm just kind of like daubing it all over. I didn't want too much. I just kind of wanted a little bit of distressing on those pieces that stuck up. And it kind of has like a rust distressing anyway. So I kind of went to those areas and kind of to try to distress those a little bit more with ivory than with the rust color. Just to kind of brighten them up, but still make them look weathered. Um, that coastal farmhouse feel. If you get too much on there, you can always wipe it off. I found that using a dry paper towel worked the best because I didn't want to remove too much, but I just wanted to make sure that nothing was too heavy. So I do that with both of the fish, and then I also do it with the starburst shape. Just kind of going around in a spiral, dabbing it all over with that brush, and kind of trying to get it even, but again, just a very slight distress. And I'm glad that I did it because it really gave the metal pieces a lot more character and I think this turned out so fun. What do you guys think about this one? Let me give you a closer look. I went ahead and hung it in my house. This is in my entryway. I think it has so much character with the corals and the fish. You got like the seaweed. You got um, your driftwood there at the bottom. 
really fun. Um, just some items from the Dollar Tree, some paint stir sticks from Walmart, and some driftwood from the beach. Hey guys, if you're enjoying today's video, be sure to hit that like button. I really appreciate it. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more DIYs. Okay, the next DIY is going to be easy. The first one was kind of intricate, so we're going to go easy on this one. You're going to need a starfish from the Shore Living line. One of these frames. Check these out. These are actually wood. I couldn't believe it. They're really pretty, and I think they look great for coastal. This is an 8x10. And I also picked up one of the 8x10 burlap canvases from the Dollar Tree. I love those things. Now, my hope is that the wood frame is going to be way sturdier than the plastic one that I've tried to do this with before. And the good news was that it was. Look at this. You can pull out the staples. No plastic breaking. Actually really sturdy. And the opening was actually large enough for the 8x10 canvas. I was so excited. These look so coastal as is covered with a burlap, really saves you a lot of steps. Um, and I like the fact that you can see through it. So testing it out for size. This was my first one. And look at that. It fits perfect. It doesn't like break the corners or anything. I'm going to have to totally stock up on these frames. I really love them. They also have them in a five by seven size. And I think a four by six maybe. So I just put a bead of hot glue along the inside just to make sure that the burlap doesn't fall out, securing that in place. And you have that wood frame and the burlap. And I thought one of these little starfish would be so cute on it. I chose the blue one because I thought that would add a little bit of color. I'm going to actually leave the rope on it, just cutting it off to make it look like it's hanging like from the frame instead of trying to remove that because I kind of like that detail. And then we're just going to simply hot glue the starfish to the burlap. I just put hot glue on all of the rays and behind the rope there and center that in place, pushing it down, making sure it is good and attached on the burlap. Now for the top part, um, to make that look like it's nice and straight and hanging, I'm going to secure that with hot glue as well. And if you wanted to make yours like a standing sign, you could always glue the back of the frame onto the back um, of the canvas really easily. I'm going to make mine a hanging sign though, but I wanted to add a little bit more color to the frame. Now this is new twine they have with the Shore Living line. It's the brown and the blue, and I thought this might bring in a little bit of color to the frame because it's kind of like a brown on brown with the burlap and the wood. And then I was like, you know, it is a little too thin, but I could probably make a thin rope out of it. So that's what we're going to try to do. I just cut three pieces longer than what I needed for the side. And I am just going to braid a simple DIY rope with this. And it actually turned out pretty cute. I'm going to start with just a dot of hot glue and take all three pieces, hot gluing that right there at the corner. And to braid your own rope, it's super easy. You want like one straight like that. And then you wrap the other two around it. So I just keep holding that one twine straight, just wrapping the other two around it. It doesn't have to be super tight. I just want a thin rope with a little bit of color here for the frame. And that worked out pretty well. It's just about the right scale I need. When I get to the corner here, I just put another dot of hot glue to glue that in place. And then I can cut off the length on the twine and we can start on the other sides. And I'm really glad that I added this. It adds like, you know, another texture with the rope, which is coastal, but just adding that little bit of blue really helped. Um, Cause I didn't want to paint the frame cause it's so pretty. So let's do the other side the same way. I cut three pieces longer than the side that I need. Just a dot of hot glue up here in the corner. And then same thing, we're just going to wrap it holding one straight and just wrapping the other two around until we get all the way to the bottom. So technically that piece that you're holding um, doesn't need to be as long as the other two, but I just cut them all longer just to make it easier. And again, we're just gonna secure it in the corner with hot glue, trying not to leave too much length on there. I don't want it like overlapping too much there um, because I'm gonna do the top and the bottom as well. The reason I know how to do this is because I was trying to make like a larger rope out of Dollar Tree rope and that's how they had us kind of braid it. 
Um, it works well on a project like this where you're gluing down both ends. Otherwise, I don't know how well it would work. <laughs> but a fun little trick if you need your twine to be thicker. So again, I just twisted it, hot glued it here in the corner, just trying to cut off any twine that might be sticking out. And this DIY was really easy to put together. They have the starfish in other colors. They have it in white. That would look really cute as well. They also have it like in red, um, blue, like a more of a royal blue. So you could do it in different colors as well. And if you don't like the color that you found at Dollar Tree, since the short living items are going so fast, you could always paint them. They paint really well as well. But be, for, be sure to check out these frames. I really, really like them. So just finishing up the fourth rope here, cutting that off, gluing it, making sure everything's trimmed up. And basically that's all there is to it. I'm just gonna use the canvas itself to hang it on the wall. I like that it's burlap and you can see through it. It looks very coastal. But again, if you want yours to be standing up, you can always glue the cardboard frame to the back. But this is how mine looks hanging. Very coastal. I'm glad that I chose the blue starfish. I think that's really pretty. And our little DIY rope there on the sides is cute as well. So the first project was intricate, so I thought I would give you an easy one for the second. But I like it. Now for the next one. I wanted to see what I can make with these new, like, um, what are they called? Wall decor um, and the yard stakes. I wanted something to look like coral, and I found these in the crafter square section. They're not necessarily coral, but I think I can make them look like coral. And I thought I would do a wall hanging with the seahorse in front of the coral and make it look really pretty. The color that I'm going to use for the coral is this. It's the smooth sea glass. It's by Mondo Llama from Target. I thought it was really pretty. Um, I wanted to use like a blue that was not too far away from the blue on the seahorse, um, but um, something kind of a little bit of a contrast. I thought this was really pretty. And so I'm just gonna do one coat of that on it to kind of make it look like a coral backdrop for our seahorse. I don't want like um, great coverage, just one coat over. I will distress this a little bit more, but this actually worked out really well. I loved it so much that we're gonna make a different version of it as well. Now to get the seahorse off the yard stake, I'm gonna leave it attached to the tail. I'm just gonna break it off here, um, right there where I just don't damage any of it. I just wanna break it off so it's not visible. With pliers, that's a really easy way to do that. It's a beautiful color blue on this, but again, it's kind of distressed with like a rust where I kind of want mine distressed with more of an ivory. And so I'm just gonna distress mine, kind of running a brush over, um, trying to get that texture brought out in the seahorse, but just a very, you know, um, ivory kind of distress instead of the rust look that was on there before. And just kind of going all over, using a paper towel to kind of blend it in if I get too heavy in an area, and just making sure that it's not bent or anything and it lays flat. I thought that looked really good. So I'm going to do this same thing here on the coral, just kind of um, dabbing my distress brush all over, just giving little dots of distress here and there. Nothing crazy, just a little bit of variety in the color. And I thought it would look really cute to attach the seahorse just like that. But I know that hot glue and metal doesn't often mix. So I'm going to try to figure out another way to attach it. So I want to make sure it's sturdy. Since it's kind of got a little bit of depth to it, I'm going to use some double-sided tape from Dollar Tree. And I actually use these little, the little foam squares, and they're not quite thick enough. So what I'm going to do is double them up. That's going to be like a quick hold to kind of hold it in place while the rest of the glue dries. So hopefully the combination of the two will help it. I kind of want to sit it there, so I'm kind of seeing where I need to put my glue. And the glue I'm going to use is E6000. You could also use like super glue um epoxy whatever you can find but just remember hot glue is not going to last really very long so i put some on its snout on its tail and maybe here on the wire where that kind of sticks up a little bit 
and we're just going to glue it in place. And the combination um, seemed to have worked because the foam really kept it in place, kind of like hot glue for like a temporary hold, which I know that's not super strong. So hopefully the E6000 will make it nice and permanent. You can flip it over and actually kind of go through like the holes here in the back, depending on which one of these little pieces that you pick up for your coral. And I'm actually just going to kind of go in the holes, the leaves, just to kind of glue it down some more and let that set up. But doesn't it look so pretty so far? Now for the top, I'm going to use one of these little wall charms. Um, this one is the starfish one, and I thought it'd be pretty to have the starfish here at the top. It has a beautiful texture. It's white. I'm going to leave mine as is, and I'm lining up the hole in the starfish with the hole in my coral. So I'm going to hot glue that in place, try to line that up before it dries, and that way I can put the hanger through both. And I think hot glue will work fine on that. It's not made out of metal. It's more of like, um, it feels kind of like ceramic, but I think it's probably made out of resin. For the hanger, I'm using that blue twine from the Shore Living line since I have a little bit of blue going on in the project and just tying a simple hanger there for the top. It was really easy to put this together and I think it turned out really beautiful. What do you guys think about this little seahorse in coral with a beautiful starfish on top? I love it. I'm so glad I found this seahorse yard stakes this year. I'm never that lucky. You can see the beautiful texture on that starfish. Love it. Haven't seen those in my store, but I ordered a case of them online from DollarTree.com and I love them so much I ordered a second case. And I still haven't seen them in my stores, but my stores have been telling me they don't have everything yet, which is kind of crazy. <laughs> but I thought it turned out so great that I wanted to make a second one. But first, let me tell you about my Facebook group. I have it linked in the description below. You can find out when I post new content and you can share your DIY, see what everyone's been making. I also have a Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Pinterest. My handle on all of those is Crafty Beach on YouTube, and I'd love to see you over there. So for the second one, I'm going to choose this wall decor piece. Um, it's a little bit different than the first one, but I thought it still could be coral. Very pretty. And um, another one of the yard stakes, I found this sea turtle one too. I was so excited. I've never found that. And then another one of these wall decor pieces. This time we're going to use the seashell one. Again, it has a beautiful texture, and the colors on this one will be a little different, but I want it to um, kind of complement the first one so I can kind of hang them together as a set. So I kind of want like the sea turtle like that swimming in front. Again, I'm just using a pair of pliers to try to break that wire off um, just, to, just where I need it to be, not enough to completely remove it because I don't want to damage that adorable sea turtle. Now, the color I chose on this one, um, I think this was kind of like a lake blue. I ended up changing it a little bit because it really wasn't the shade of blue that I was looking for. But I'm going to go ahead and paint this one all over just with a sponge brush. As you can see, super easy to paint these. And they had these in like all different varieties in um, the Crafter Square at my Dollar Tree. But I think they definitely remind me of corals. So I think they work great for coastal crafting. Now for the sea turtle, I don't want it to be that color. So to get it all painted evenly, and since it's metal, I thought it would be easiest just to spray paint it. So that's what I'm going to do. I have some spray paint that is like a sea glass color um, Rust-Oleum. So I'm just going to put like a wood block underneath of them to lift them up a little bit. This is, oh, I guess it's not Rust-Oleum. It's Krylon. <laughs> and I'm just going to spray him this color of blue. Be a nice base coat. I'm going to distress him and stuff, but that was a quick way to kind of change the shade of blue of him, and it seemed to work out really well. You can see how the metal is all stamped, so you're still going to get all that great texture and everything um, to be able to kind of customize that a little bit further. So that looks pretty good. Now I decided to change the color of my coral. I decided to go back with that same um, sea glass color that we used before and kind of make them match a little bit. Mixing the two blues together did make it a slightly different color of blue, but I'm okay with that. I think it looks really pretty. I just wanted something um, 
close, kind of complimentary. Uh, the sea turtle is a little darker, but we're going to distress that. So that will lighten it up a little bit. So just kind of slightly changing the color on this one, just because I didn't really like the color that I chose at first. And the little like um, buds on these definitely reminds me of some kind of coral or something that you would find under the sea. Just try to get it all even. And then we can start distressing some of the pieces so we can put this together. For the sea turtle, I'm gonna use this color to kind of distress it. Um, I think this is the Caribbean blue. And I'm just gonna kind of dab all over with my um, chunky brush from Dollar Tree, trying to give a very light distress, bring in like a softer color of blue to this. And I'm gonna go all over the shells. I already did the head the flippers, just giving it a very light distress, just trying to bring more character in it and make it not like all one color like it was after I spray painted it. Then we're gonna go in with antique parchment again, um, kind of an ivory color, and we're gonna distress everything just like we did before, just kind of like dotting that on the coral. Anytime I can make something like, you know, a a few different shades of colors. It's going to give it more depth, um, just give it a lot more character. And so I just kind of do that, kind of blending it in a little bit here, just with a dry paper towel. And then I'm going to use that same ivory color to distress my turtle as well. Just kind of distressing it the same way I did with the blue. Just going to provide a little bit more color and details to this little guy until I'm happy with them. I just didn't like the shade of blue that it was before. It didn't really go with what I was trying to do. And I'm thinking it's looking pretty cute. Now I wanted to kind of get in between like the little scoots here on its shell. So I kind of switched it up to a smaller paintbrush and I'm just, just kind of distressing those a little bit with the ivory as well, just for a little bit more definition. This is just me probably being a little bit extra, but I really do like how he turned out. I have never, I don't know if they've had the sea turtle one before. I know I've never found them. So I was really excited to find them at my Dollar Tree the other day. So I'm going to attach them the same way that I did the seahorse that seemed to work well. The double-sided foam tape from the Dollar Tree doubled up to make it thick enough. And we're going to place a couple of those like inside the turtle shell where I think it's gonna kind of match up with the coral like that. And then we can use E6000 to glue the metal to it. I've tried um, using these metal yardstakes from the Shore Living line with hot glue on projects and I found that they stuck, but not for long and I don't want this falling apart. So I glued that down Again, I have access to the back, so you can go in there and add more glue and stuff if you need to um, and get everything just right. Um, I think that looks pretty good like that. Now it's time to add the seashell. I chose something different than the starfish for a little bit of variety, but again, it has a hole on the top that I can align with the hole and our faux coral. And so I'm gonna do that again um, just by gluing that in place and putting the hanger through that. So kind of having it go off to the left this side because I had the starfish kind of go off to the right in the seahorse DIY. And I want to be able to kind of hang these together as a set. Again, using that blue twine from the Shore Living to make a simple hanger. And this one turned out so cute as well. Let me give you a little close up view of this one. And then I'm going to show you what they look like together. They look so cute hanging together as a set. So I'm so glad that I made two. You can see all the colors come together on that turtle. Looks super cute. And our faux coral looks cute as well. I really love those little wall charm things. They're really neat. And I told you I would show you what they look like hanging together. And this is what they look like hanging together in my house. I love that there's like different items at the top, different corals, different sea creatures. Really beautiful set. 
definitely doesn't look like you bought the items at the Dollar Tree. Isn't that so cute? I thought that was really fun. Very easy to make, but turned out beautiful. Now for the next DIY, we're going to use one of the new shell signs from the Dollar Tree. But I'm not really going to use that side with the fancy stuff on it. I'm going to just flip mine over. So if you have one from last year, that will work. And we're going to make a seashell covered seashell. <laughs> so I'm going to use these new seashells from the Dollar Tree. They're made out of plastic, which kind of threw me off at first. But then I was like, you know, those would be great for crafting. They're all going to be like shaped perfectly. And they won't break. So... They even have great colors, as you can see. It's just trying to figure out a strategy, how I can kind of overlap these to cover this to make it look really good. And I wasn't sure, since they were plastic, how well they would hold up to hot glue, because I have really hot glue with that Ryobi hot glue gun, and they seem to hold up just fine. So I'm gonna start at the very top of mine. At first I was gonna kind of like, glue them like this trying to fill out the top of the scallop shell but it got a little complicated trying to get it just right so I do develop a better strategy but this is kind of getting me started here that way I can kind of like overlap um, by putting some glue on the bottom of those there at the top they're going to kind of all hang over um, otherwise I'm going to put hot glue on the bottom and the top part. This was me trying to kind of figure out how this was gonna work. But then I decided that it would probably be easier just to do rows. So I'm gonna start with that middle row that I've already started. So I'm gonna hot glue it to the wood sign, but I'm also hot gluing it to the shell that I'm overlapping to just a little bit. And I'm gonna continue that down. So as you can see, they are great for crafting. I think that the variety and color kind of gives them more of a realistic feel. They are plastic, which gives them a little bit of a plastic shine, but I'll show you what I did to kind of solve that on mine to try to make them look more realistic. But I'm just going all the way down to the bottom there with my first row to cover the seashell with seashells. And I have another seashell plan for this DIY as well. I thought they would all work together really well. So I'm doing my second row. As you can see, I'm kind of alternating that a little bit so that the one next to it will kind of fit in it, kind of like a glove, putting a hot glue on the top and the bottom, overlapping the one next to it um, or under it, and then kind of to the one to the side like that. And going all the way down here, I will worry about covering the little areas of the sign that aren't covered once I get all of my seashells on there. So I'm gonna do a row on the other side, same thing. Just hot gluing these, super easy. Takes a little bit of time to do this because it is a larger sign, but I really love how it turned out. It was definitely a work of art. I have a total of three packages and I used about two and a half, not maybe two and a quarter of the bags. So they do have quite a few in there. And I do like them better than like the broken ones that they had before, like the real ones that have like particles and stuff all over them. They're nice and um, perfect and clean. <laughs> so I thought they worked really great for this. And I've been wanting to try them on something. So I just kind of go as far down there on the bottom as I can with that row. And then here it was a little tricky. I kind of needed like a half a piece and I couldn't figure out how to get that to work. And then I decided um, I would just kind of make it go up a little bit further like that. But then I thought that kind of stuck out too far. So my solution was to kind of turn the top one sideways to make it shorter. And it actually worked out pretty well like that. So I did one sideways there at the top. It's gonna kind of give me a half of a seashell shape without it sticking out too much. And then just continuing my same row pattern, going down with all these adorable little seashells. Now, one thing that I end up doing on this project is adding a rope border around it to really play up that um, shell shape and to kind of frame it out. I wish that I would have kind of attached that to the wooden sign first 
because when I got over here to the edges, it would have given me something else to glue this shell to, um, especially when they're kind of hanging off the edges like that. But I didn't know at this point I was gonna frame it out, but I thought it needed it after I had all of the shells attached. So same thing, just finishing it off row by row. And as you can see, these things are definitely easy to craft with. I know several of you have found these as well at your stores. I was really surprised and I thought it was really funny when the cashier tried to wrap them up like fragile items. And I was like, those are plastic. <laughs> they were like, no way. I'm like, I know I've never seen them before either. So on that row, I did um, put one sideways at the top like I did on the other side to make that fit a little bit better. And then just doing a couple here, kind of almost hanging off the side, kind of gluing them at an angle to cover up that side of the seashell. Down here at the bottom, where I had some loose pieces, I'm gonna go through, try to cover those up as well. Sometimes I can only hot glue like the top of this shell um, to kind of get that attached. So no bottom. And as you can see, those two packages almost made it, but I did need a few more, I guess, here from the last package to get all of the wood covered up with seashells. I have one little space over here, so I'm gonna put one more there. So that's what it looks like so far. I thought you couldn't necessarily tell it was a shell shape very well, so we're gonna kind of outline it with Dollar Tree rope. This is like um, some of the thicker rope. I wish it was even thicker. I end up doubling it up to make it like a more substantial frame for this. But for the first row, I'm just gonna kind of start behind some of the seashells just to kind of hide that loose end right there. Thought that'd be a good place to start and hide it. So I'm just gonna do a bead of hot glue on this side of the wood sign and start that right there. This is about the same size as the shell sign was last year. If you've got one of those left over in your stash, the one that had like the little, I think it was starfish on it. But these are new this year and I like them. I just didn't really need that wood detail on it because I knew I wanted to cover my seashell with shells. So gluing um, to the side is really easy. Up here, it gets a little bit trickier because I want to get that shape of the seashell. So I want to get it kind of down in all the ridges, kind of with a thicker rope. So before my hot glue sets up, I try to kind of force it into those little corners to try to make it bend and make little round edges come out. I'm using like the Cricut weeder to kind of like force it down in there a little bit. I'm just going to leave the hanger that's on it. So I'm just trying to avoid that. I do end up having to take the wood beads off of it because I just didn't have enough room after we did a double of the rope border. The reason that I go around it twice is because as you can see, some of the seashells are really sticking out a lot and you really wouldn't be able to see the rope border um, because it's kind of hidden by the seashells. So I'm going to go around it here the first time and then we're going to go back around it again to make even wider rope frame. And I'm really glad I added this. I think it really added a lot to the piece. So almost around, again, just trying to get all of those turns and hot glue the end. I did stop and then we're gonna start again with a second row. Um, that's what it looks like with one row. As you can see, it's still not super obvious, um, the shape with the border. So I had enough rope on that package to go around it again. And so that's exactly what we're gonna do. I'm gonna start at the bottom again and just hot glue the rope to itself um, to give me a wider rope border. And I was much happier with it the way it looked like that. So um, again, just gluing the rope to itself. And I'm kind of putting it underneath the seashells as you can see there. Um, that kind of overlap and that made a much better border because now you can kind of see it all the way around. Again, the wood beads were a little too much. I left the same hanger on there, but I took them off just because there wasn't going to be enough room for them anymore. Otherwise, I thought they were cute. I was going to leave them on there. 
and just working my way around here towards the bottom. Now we're almost done with this piece. I think it's looking really cute, but I thought it needed something. I didn't really like like the plastic look of the shells that much. Um, I thought I wanted them to have like a little bit more of a matte finish. And so I'll show you how I'm gonna do that. First, we're gonna burn off all the fuzzies here on the rope, just with a lighter, just to clean it up a little bit. It wasn't too hairy, but I always like to do that. I think it just makes it look more finished. Now to give it that matte finish, I'm just gonna use matte Mod Podge from the Dollar Tree. Super easy way to kind of trick those shells, make them look a little bit less shiny little bit more realistic. I do love the colors on them. I think that variety really works well, especially for plastic. And so I just go over the whole thing with that, with one coat of the matte Mod Podge. And that did take a lot of that plastic sheen off, which I don't really like that that much. And almost done. I just think it needs one more thing. We're gonna use one of these wall charms from the Dollar Tree that's also shaped like a seashell. So I'm just gonna use some pliers and take the twine and wood beads off the back. I like the color. I like that it's a, um, a little bit different color than the seashells with the white and it's distressed. I did a bead of hot glue all the way around and we're just gonna glue that seashell like right in the center of our seashell covered seashell. So I think that really kind of ties everything together. Really fun project to do. It is definitely a little bit time consuming just because you have to glue all the seashells in place, but look how beautiful it turned out. So much character, I really love it. Um, really fun DIY, I would highly recommend. And I really love those wood charms like that. They're so pretty, aren't they? Right there on the front. I wanted to take a quick break to let you know about memberships. For $4.99 a month, you can get early ad-free access to my videos. All you have to do is hit that join button under today's video and you're free to cancel any time. I'd really appreciate it. Okay, the next DIY. I love these little glass bottles from the Shore Living Line, but I never really know what to do with them because I don't really have any liquids to put in them. So I wanted to see if I could make it more into a decor piece. I also got one of these bottles from the Dollar Tree that has like the lights inside with the little cork. And I thought I could take maybe that lighted cork and reuse it in that beautiful blue glass bottle from the Shore Living Line at Dollar Tree. I do still wanna use that cool shell shape at the top. If I can figure out exactly how to do it, it's gonna be a little too tall if I leave um, the cork that was already on there on there. So I'm gonna to try to figure this out. I start by kind of just cutting off that rubber uh, seal from the cork to see what we're working with. And it's just like a plastic piece. So I think I should be able to cut that off um, to reuse that on the top if I wanted to, because that's one of my favorite things about the bottle. But at the same time, I want my bottle to light up. So I wanted to use one of these light corks. These things are really cool. They have like the little LED lights on them, just a wire. So I'm just untangling that so we can fill that blue bottle up. I thought that blue bottle with that texture would look just so pretty um, lit up with these. So we're gonna try it out, put these inside and the cork is made out of like kind of a caramel colored plastic. It's not super pretty, the cork, um, because it doesn't really look like wood and it's got like little symbols and stuff on the front of it with like a little battery pack on the back. It's still like the smallest battery pack for these that I've seen to light up a bottle like these. So I like the idea of it being a cork. They kind of give it more of a wood look. I'm gonna just, just distress it with like this um, Beachcomber Beige color by Apple Barrel and just in one direction, just to kind of give it a wood grain. Just a little something to make it look better because I'm not a huge fan of how it looks. I'm also gonna do that here on the top. And I want to still be able to use that shell part as well. So we're going to try to make this work. I am just putting my lights right back down in here into the bottle, trying to figure out the like most even way <laughs> to get the lights in there. I thought if I like folded them in thirds, 
That way I would get just as many lights at the top as I have in the middle and at the bottom, and that seemed to work really well. The cork fits in there nicely. It might be a little large, but I want to kind of disguise it with that shell that I cut off from the rest of the cork just using my saw. It was actually pretty easy to cut. That way it can kind of just kind of disguise the cork there. I just attach it with a little bit of hot glue to the lip of the bottle. I get the best of both worlds. Now I get the lights. I get that beautiful shell on the top. The blue color um, looks so great lit up. And just a fun way to DIY these shore living bottles. Thought it needed a little bit more. So I'm going to take some of that blue twine from the shore living line. And I want to cover like um, the top of the bottle with that. So I just tied that off and we're just going to wrap that around to kind of cover most of the bottle there at the top. So I just kind of glue down one end and then just use the, the twine to wrap it around it until I'm happy with it. I also want to kind of dangle that down, maybe add a few seashells to it as well. But I just wanted to add a little bit more texture by adding the twine to it with the combination of the glass. I thought that looked pretty. So for the pieces hanging down, I'm actually going to tie that on separately. So I just glue that off. I'm going to burn off any fuzzies on that, kind of get it ready. And then um, I'm going to use some of the little tiny seashells from the Dollar Tree to hang there on the front of them. These come in the little glass bottles. Been having trouble finding these the last couple months at my stores. Hopefully they get them back in stock. I really love them. I'm just going to choose two different seashells. It doesn't really matter. Just kind of on the same kind of scale that I can kind of like dangle down in front of the bottle like that. So I'm just going to cut off another piece of that twine. And we're going to tie a knot here on the front. And we can simply attach the seashells with hot glue kind of dangling down the front. Just a fun, another little fun decorative piece to add to these. And I was so glad that I did this project because I always buy these bottles. Sometimes I set them around. I never really know what to do with them because uh, I don't really have anything to put in them. So lighting them up and using them for decoration worked really well. Now I wrapped that twine around and under so it would hang down kind of properly next to the other one. And then I adding, I'm adding a seashell to that one too. I want to make like this one a little bit shorter so they kind of hang like staggered like that so I just hot glue that to the back of the seashell as well and this is how it turned out let me show you how beautiful this is especially all lit up this isn't even like at night but it still looks beautiful you can see it leaves like a beautiful like kind of dotted pattern everywhere around it when it's lit up from that beautiful texture of the short living bottle. So I kind of wish they came with lights already. Isn't that so pretty? But using a couple items from the Dollar Tree, I was able to make it work. Now for the next DIY, we're going to use a sea turtle glass sign. These are new this year from the short living line. I used the seahorse ones in a previous video to make a lantern and they turned out so cute. So I wanted to see if I could kind of use this as more of a sign, but give it some character. The first thing I do is just remove the twine from the top because I want this to be a standing sign. I like the fact that the sea turtle is on glass. I think that's super cute, but I don't really appreciate the white plastic frame. So we're going to add some color to that. And I'm just going to use some craft wood from the Dollar Tree. I had a scrap piece that's just the right length. And that's going to be a great base for the sign. Since it is a glassy turtle, you could always put like a candle or something behind this. It would be really pretty. I'm just going to make a simple kind of see-through sign. Now painting the plastic frame is a little bit challenging. I'm going to start here. Um, I'm just using Caribbean blue and I'm just using a sponge and just lightly dragging that on the plastic. Another option you could do is to like Mod Podge at first because you really just need something for the acrylic paint to stick to. And the plastic, it doesn't really want to stick to, as you can see. It's just looking like a very light blue distress, but that's okay. If we do several layers, um, we can finally get that blue. I wanted to add definitely some more color to that. 
So I just did a very thin coat, dried it, and then I just keep going over it with more thin coats until I get it bluer and bluer. And I'm so glad that I added the color to it. I think it made it look a lot better because the frame itself is eh, not the greatest. I think the glass is too big to fit in another frame though because I did think about that. But I thought we could try to make it work. I'm going to use that same Caribbean blue color here. Um, I think that's Caribbean blue by Delta and paint um, the top and the sides of that scrap wood piece because I want to try to make it match the frame as much as I can. So that's what the frame looks like with two coats. It's still not super blue, so I'm going to go over it here with a third coat. And I'm doing all four sides, but I'm only doing like the edges, the top, and the two sides because I don't really want to put any paint on the bottom. I'm going to use that area to attach it to this side. And so um, I went over the base with another coat of that Caribbean blue as well to bring out the color. And I thought it still wasn't quite as blue as I wanted. So I think this is like a fourth coat. So be prepared if you're going to paint the plastic frame. It is going to take quite a few coats. If you don't use Mod Podge, I probably should have. But I think that looks good. It's definitely as blue as I'd like. And it's starting to match the wood, the actual wood that we painted blue. I want them to coordinate with each other. Now for the base, I wanted to give a little bit of texture to the sides because they are not great. And then I remembered I did not paint the back of it. So I'm going to paint the back of it as well. Um, that way I can wrap some of that burlap trim all the way around it. This is the one that I'm going to hot glue on. It is like the wavy um, burlap trim kind of reminded me of ocean waves and i'm just going to go all the way around the base all four sides just hot gluing that on it's going to give it a little bit of character and texture and the sides are not made out of great wood so that kind of helps make it look better now it's just a matter of putting this together they're almost exactly the same size i just do a bead of hot glue along the bottom of the frame and then just sit it here on my base to make a standing sign. I've been looking for lots of ways to DIY with these because I bought a whole case of them. I think they're really pretty, but here it is, my sea turtle one. We made it into a standing sign. Again, it would look pretty with light behind it, but it kind of looks pretty on its own. I think these would look really nice too if you had a window or a little area to hang them to get some outdoor light through them as well. But it was definitely a quick, easy little DIY. And I love that gorgeous sea turtle there on the glass. Okay, you've made it all the way to the final reveal. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you enjoyed today's video, be sure to hit that like button. Subscribe if you haven't. We're trying to grow here on YouTube. And don't forget to comment your favorite DIY in the comments below. I love hearing from you guys and I always read all of your comments. Enjoy the final reveal. Now on this boat and we are
Thank you so much for making it all the way to the end of the video. That always helps so much. Also wanted to give a huge thank you to all of my Crafty Beach Bum members for supporting my channel. Thank you to Karen O'Haran, Melinda Elizabeth, Jamie Job, Susan Edmonds, Carrie R., Tracy Knight, Nancy Warner, Julie Miller, Janae Farrington, Pamelia Wren, Maria Grace, Donna Schreiner, Sandy C. and Lindsay. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you. And if you'd like to watch more Dollar Tree Shore Living DIYs, be sure to check out this video right here. Happy crafting!